Olympic Basketball Fans USA dominates in their first two appearances in the Olympics through the group stage. This is Zero Gravity Apollo Media's NBA podcast brought to you by Big City Wings. Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint. Go check them out if you're in the Houston area. They got 13 locations. They're all over the place. Got great wings, great people, and great beer over at Big City Wings. Shout out to them for sponsoring this episode of Zero Gravity and shout out to Prize Picks. It's our daily fantasy sponsor. Daily fantasy is where you hit more or less on any stat, any night, any game. Any player, you just choose more or less on points, rebounds, assists, whatever you may choose, and uh, you can win some money. It's pretty good. Use code Apollo when you sign up and get up to a hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Not a big deal. Shout out to Prize Pick. Shout out to Big City Wings. And shout out to you, Josh. How is my American fellow doing today? I'm doing so great. The the amount of American fuel that's just running through my veins. Seeing Katie Ledecky just dominate the uh, 1500 meter. Yeah. And then switching over and seeing Tyrese Halliburton hit back-to-back threes. Um, not really many feelings that you could ever really replicate like that. Um, yeah. But I got to feel that today. Uh, I feel amazing. How are you feeling? But first of all, I just want to say South Sudan has earned my respect. Not only yeah. from the first game, but today as well. Um, a lot of guys just – a lot of guys, guys on that team. JT Thor, uh, Charlotte Hornets legend. Um, Omot. Uh, which sounds like Tony Romo backwards, uh, but if you combine uh, the letters, uh, love what's going on over there. Lou Aldang still looks prime Laker. Um, you can put him in. Any, you can put him anywhere, uh, and he might uh, put him in the big three. How about that? Um, maybe we'll do a big three recap this summer. I'm just kidding. No, um, but how are you feeling? Good Be to dumb. see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, uh, the Olympics are in real full swing. I mean, everything's going on at one time. It's uh, hard to keep up with but uh shout out to the the gold channel the gold what do they call it gold zone gold the gold zone on peacock uh what what this is all i've been missing my entire life like we have nfl (laughs) electric and sunday's nfl red zone is on the entirety of the first and second games and it's the best thing ever i see everything and anything i want to see within a timely manner sometimes live it's delightful gold zone kind of doing the same thing they don't switch as often because the events aren't like football where it's one play and then you can switch off after 10 seconds like you can't really do that but it's awesome going from tennis to water polo to soccer to rugby to swimming to basketball they have all the sports going on at one time it's incredible shout out gold zone um whoever just decided to rip nfl red zone great job you deserve Absolutely. all of the money. It's incredible. And this you're the best. Thank you for that. Uh, like you said, swimming, uh, that's my sport. That's the, that's what I pay attention to the most. Katie Ledecky swimming her eighth best time ever. Eighth best time ever from anyone, actually. Also, Katie Ledecky's eighth best. Ten seconds off the world record. And no one in sight. No one in sight no. when she finished. It's the best feeling ever watching Katie Ledecky swim. I can't even imagine what it feels like to be her and just finish and... Like you could just get out of the pool and grab your medal, get dried off, take a shower, and then everyone's going to finish it after that's over. It's incredible. <laughs> it's the best. I love Katie Ledecky. But yeah, oh, USA man. basketball. We're here. Back. That's right. End of the quarterfinals. Right. So we watched two games. Um, first game in the group stage, we played Serbia. We beat them 110 to 84. Um, right off the bat, the one thing that stood out for me that game was when Jokic was on the floor, it was not fun. I did not have very much fun when Jokic was on the floor. He was a plus minus of zero. So he's exactly even with the U.S. when he was on the court. And he didn't play for nine minutes, and we beat him by 26. Yep. Nine minutes, yep. 26 <laughs> points. Insane. We, we need to be bailed out because uh, if this if the, if the these games were 48 minutes, I'm not saying Serbia would have come back, but an extra eight minutes of Nikola Jokic or maybe, let's say, six minutes. Um, right. That would terrify me just that much more. Um, seeing how close it was at the beginning and seeing how cl- uh, the Team USA is more more so of a slow starting team, kind of understand that from the showcase. And uh, now that we're seeing it actually happen in the Olympics, I'm kind of, you know, part of me is a little bit worried. But then I'm like, wait, we're the U.S. of fucking A. We're going to win this thing regardless. Um, yeah. I just, you know, it freaks me out a little bit knowing that uh, – our team maybe is kind of playing with our food a little bit, um, but we kind of have the uh, authority to do that because we're we're going to win the damn thing. Um, it sucks that Puerto Rico, uh, my dark horse, is uh, probably out of it already on game yeah. two. Um, I, think so. I think they got blown out by 40 uh, against Serbia. Um, 
Not so good. maybe Serbia is is just a real country, and uh, Puerto Rico is just playing like a territory. I don't know what's going on over there, but uh, I'm just glad to see our teams are winning. Bamonte in game two, yeah. it was a beautiful thing. Uh, but I want to let you talk about this real quick because um, you seem to be a little bit more offended about this than I am, which I do feel some kind of way about it. But Dwayne Wade on the commentary team, let me know your thoughts about that. So full disclosure, I did not listen to game one. I had it on my laptop on silent. We were watching gymnastics on the TV. I, I'm in like full Olympian mode, like just send me the Ralph Lauren kits, boys and girls. Like I'll I'll rep it all day long for the next two weeks. I'm in. I'm locked in. Track and field's coming up soon. I'm be dialed. Dialed in. So Ralph Lauren hit my line. Uh, yeah, Dwayne Wade is the first like six minutes of the game. I was like. What, what are we doing here? And I, I sent you a text uh, that said Dwayne Wade is worse than Reggie Miller. Case closed or whatever I said. I've decided maybe. And um, it got better. It got way better. And then Dwayne Wade's like trying to talk to the players while they're on the court. Like he's screaming Bam that, Monte yeah. at Bam because he told them that he was going to call him Bam Monte on the, on the cast if he did anything so, like cool. Um, then he's trying to get LeBron's attention. I'm like, buddy. You're not on the team anymore. It's not how that works. You're you're in the booth. Call the game. <laughs> talk to him after. So it's a little distracting. And uh, some of the jokes that Dwayne Wade has told, um, they're interesting. <laughs> and, and they're not really funny. <laughs> it's just no. like, why, why? Why was that what came to your mind? But yeah, Dwayne Wade, uh, you might be a one and done. You weren't in college, but maybe you are for NBC in the Olympics. <laughs> there so, it is. I don't know. <laughs> well, he was he was good. Like the first six minutes were real rough, and then it was good, and then he made some jokes, and I was like, nah, I don't get it. And then he started interacting in the third and fourth quarter. I'm like, dude, this is like first quarter talk, second quarter talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that that was my issues with him. Imagine it, him it talking in a close middle. game. Fine yeah. in the middle, mm-hmm. but everything else was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> God, man, I, 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 it freaks me out knowing that he's going to like do this in the quarterfinals, the semis, and the actual finals, assuming that we get the same commentary team. And Noah Eagle is just sitting over there. Also, re- related to Ian Eagle, question mark? Does yeah, that run Nate, in the family? I would assume so. Like The announcers just are all related, I've decided. Yeah. <laughs> like, everyone's <laughs> related to everyone. It's insane. It's, yeah, it started with Jack Buck, and now here we are. Yeah, um, the Bucks, and then uh, what was the Cubs announcer's name? Uh, Harry so, Carey, or yeah, his son yeah. is was the Braves guy. I think he's. I don't know if he's. Uh, I think he's in Texas now. I think he's at the Rangers, mm-hmm. but I could be wrong. But yeah, Harry Carey's son or grandson, one one of the two. Um, yeah, everyone's related. I don't know. Yeah. I got that's great. I had no idea. Um, I love the fact that a commentator can work for let's say forty or fifty years and just go from city to city to city. Yeah. I, wanna, I kind of want to know more as to like what uh, diminishes those relationships over time. You know what I mean? Because like, mm-hmm. I feel like if you're in it, you're in it. But if the execs don't like you you're out of there um yeah. but yeah. i don't know Noah eagle was definitely getting a little upset i could tell maybe like passing the rhythm in, in, in going order three talk about the game and like what's happening what, what is that like play called like what do talk about the game a little bit yeah, expand yeah. On the game so, so, so you're, you're essentially trying to interact with everybody else <laughs> yeah you're essentially telling Dwayne wade to shut up and talk pretty much essentially it's like <laughs> it, you're not on the court and you're not on the team you can't interact with them while you're on a call to wow. millions of people, I would assume, like that are tuning it could in. Could be billions. <laughs> it could be billions. I don't know. Everyone could be watching this game at once and you're supposed yeah. to be creating something for the viewer and the listener as opposed to what you would like to have conversations about. You're exactly. supposed to create the environment for the listener. Because if they can't view it and they're listening to you, why are, why are you trying to interact like Bamonte? What did Bamonte do? Like what happened? I would love to know what just happened. And then exactly, and the, exactly. and the Eagles going to be like, he just hit a corner three and he doesn't shoot three. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Derek Lively. Do you, do you want to say the Derek Lively stat since we're, t- since we're talking about a center shooting threes here? I mean, a hundred percent field goal percentage from three in the NBA finals. Who can say that? No, not, not many. many. Can say that. Not <laughs> also, many. Seeing a Steph Curry stinker was kind of a beautiful thing. As long as we win, you know, um, uh, also Jason Tatum's first three of the game, just being a corner brick 
not hitting anything other than the side of the backboard. Um, oh. It also feels very good. Uh, maybe, you know, we're almost 10 minutes into this recording. I, I told you that um, Jason Tatum being or starting today and Joel Embiid not playing is almost like Hitler versus Stalin because you're just it, – it's going to be one or the other and, you know, you'd like for both of them just to not even be there. And it sucks that we're going to get one of them uh, at yeah. pretty much all times. Um <laughs> Seeing Jason Tatum just pop that bullshit three, it made me freaked out a little bit because I was like, "Huh, South Sudan can they they might they might do this thing again." Um, but then, like I said, Tyrese Halliburton went off with those two threes and then did nothing for the rest of the game. Steph Curry was just kind of shooting whatever. Um, yeah. I think he made one or two shots uh, after the whistle where I was like, "Oh, there's Steph. Too bad he can't do that in the game." Um, but there was no e- exact real dominating performer today, like how there mm-hmm. was with uh, KD uh, game one. Um, I wish Ant-Man got a little more play today. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, what can you do? We won by 17 points. Uh, some sick plays at the end there. Ant-Man getting a sick dunk at the end. Um, it, it, it makes you feel good. But seeing LeBron uh, maybe not have the exact vertical that he uh, once had, it definitely definitely stings a little bit. It kind of eats away at you. But uh, maybe this is everyone's last dance like we were talking about uh, off camera. And... Um, we look forward to the 2028 Olympics with Derek Lively being the starting center and Jalen Green being the sixth man. How does that sound to you? You like that? You had me in the first half. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so back to game one, Joel Embiid starts. And I have been a very big proponent of passport merchant Joel Embiid um, uh-huh. hopping onto our team. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I don't like Joel Embiid. I don't enjoy watching him play basketball. I understand that he is very good at basketball. He's incredible. He's a top two center in the NBA right now. Um, he's won an MVP. He's a like top tier basketball player. I get that. But for the Olympics, I want the most American motherfuckers on the team. I want yeah. him to go kill for our country. <laughs> Joel Embiid has lived in like seven countries now. And seven's a stretch. But Cameroon, <laughs> he has a French passport somehow, which I think is through Cameroon. It, a lot of the African countries are French related, like Algeria, like Kareem Benzema's from Algeria, but he plays for France. I don't, I don't get it. But yeah, um, yeah, I just, I didn't want him on the team. And then he's starting Game One of the Olympics. Like he's taking the tip for my patriotic American basketball team, and I didn't like it one bit. And <laughs> this seems weird as a, a white man talking about patriot patriotism and who's on my team that I don't own that I'm not really a part of in any way, shape or form because I'm just talking about it on a podcast, but I don't know. It just didn't settle right with me. Okay. All right. Okay. Be taking the tip, but he stunk out loud in game one. And it made yes. me so happy. Cause we're like, we're in it with Serbia right now. Like they're, they're in the lead and we're tied. Like we don't have a one point lead, a two point lead. And you're like halfway almost through the first quarter. And you're like, it's not good. It's not good. Joel Embiid close in the first. Yeah, and then Joel Embiid just kind of fell off a cliff in the first half and just didn't really play in the second half. So that that made that was music to my ears. And then the other thing that just made me so happy is that two players did not play at all in game one. Tyrese Halliburton. You're like, yeah, he's the happy to be here. I'm going to be a great teammate. I'm going to win a gold medal. This is sick. This is experience for me for 2028. Jason Tatum, hand me a towel. Give me a Gatorade. Sit your ass on the bench and sulk the whole time. Like his face, the entirety on the bench. And Halliburton's just cheesing from ear to ear. Yeah. Having the time of his life on the end of the bench. And Jason Tatum's just pouting. I just won an NBA Finals. I'm on the cover of 2K. No one gives a fuck. Sit your ass on the bench in game one. It was the best. And then we get to game two and he's starting. And it was like, damn it, man. We just, we had it. We had what we needed to do. We bench and bead. And then we just... We start Tatum, and then Tatum had some good plays, I will say. He had he had some good defensive plays, um, had some good spacing and passing and the movements of the ball and everything on offense, but his jump shot is broken. I think he's like one for 23, dating back to like before the Olympics when they were just playing uh, exhibition games or whatever on his jump not, shot. Not, not ideal. One no. for 23 on jump shots, not, right. not in total. But like his jumper might be broken. He hits the side of the backboard, first shot, and I'm just... <laughs> It was, it was bad, <laughs> oh, and it, bad, it made me so happy. And it's weird cheering against someone that's on 
Team USA. You yeah, shouldn't but, really do that, but I, as an NBA fan, I had to do it. I have to. I'm a, I'm a man true to my word. Fuck you're you're, you're anti patriotic. Um, I would just like to say, you know, uh, my taxpayer dollars going to this team. <laughs> I pay your salary, Jason Tatum. <laughs> I don't think they get a salary. I don't think so either. I, don't, I think they just, if they win a gold medal, it's like thirty seven thousand dollars. Wow, that's life changing amount of money uh, for these guys. Wow, yeah. um, that's a, a amazing. New, like stock AP watch. Yeah, there not, you go. Not even a good one. Like just one that you can get on the shelf. Nice. Yeah, you're in the you're in the mall uh, kiosk, just talking yeah. your shit with 30, 30 bands in your pocket. Sounds like a good time uh, if you were yeah. an average citizen. Yeah. But uh, no, this is Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid. We're talking about. Um, I, I I'm curious to see because um, you know I think how many official teams is, are are involved in this? Is, are we at twelve or eight? I'm not. I'm not so, sure. I would assume it's twelve, right? Yeah. Yeah. It has to be twelve. And you you take two from each group. No, you take three from each group. I don't know. They're in the quarterfinals. So how many teams is lo- teams are left? So it would be four. No, wait, six, four, Eight. two quarters, semis, finals. OK. Yeah, we talk things out on zero gravity. Is that right? Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. I'm or spreading this information. I, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Quarterfinals. All, all I know is Dennis Schroeder being the uh, poster child for Germany is awesome. That would make sense. Quarterfinals, the winner of each group gets a buy or whatever right like college sure. football playoffs there's 12 teams no like no no i no? cuz i know the usa already qual i'm sure there's somebody watching who's like how the fuck do y'all not know this math um is hard. yeah math is very hard but we've already clinched a quarter final so guy. we could just we could just put anthony edwards out or whoever yeah. tyrese halliburton or even jason tatum uh for our game against puerto rico here which i still will watch all of yeah. um cuz you never know i might uh might throw a little uh, support of my local territories uh, yes. in Puerto Rico, which I still don't know why they're necessarily a uh, – uh, shouldn't they be, like, uh, engraved or ingrained with us? I, I don't know what's going think, on there. Because it's like, you know, France, England, they all have these other territories. Fair, fair. But they they all report back to, like, the queen and the parliament and all that shit. So I don't reporting back to the queen. That was a great like, way to phrase that. <laughs> rip, rip in peace. Sorry, Queen Elizabeth. Um, so the king Charles uh, also may rest in peace. I don't. He may be dead. We don't really know. Um, there. Just talking allegedly. Uh, that, that's that's talking England. Uh, talking royalty. <laughs> that's talking royals. That's great. Um, but they all they all have to like somewhat listen to something that they say. I would. I think they all have yeah. their own prime ministers and presidents and whatever, but they have to like. They're still England, Puerto Rico. I don't. I don't know what they do. Do they, they report back to the U.S. Or are they just they use American name? stamps, right? I I think so, and yeah. I think that like. I I don't I don't really understand. I think we just support them whenever they get hit by a hurricane, like every year. That I we think throw, that's we what throw, we're we, there we for. Throw paper towels relief. at them, <laughs> or hurricane relief. We drop shit onto your island and don't actually help. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the Katrina, US of A, baby. FEMA. That's the US of A, baby. But <laughs> yeah, US is 2 0. So, start group stage, they advance to the quarterfinals. So, the game against Puerto Rico doesn't actually matter. Um, but, you know, we'll watch. And Embiid playing zero minutes in game two and Tatum stinking made me happy. Uh, Bamonte, would you like to go on a soapbox about Bamonte out of bio? Um, I'll give you a good uh, 30 seconds uh, seeing him actually take decent looking threes um makes me wonder what is this guy going to do in the nba next season uh maybe are we getting a year seven year eight bam out of bio explosion uh, almost like how we've been saying year four jalen green or year three jalen green um bam out of bio is clearly obviously obviously a top 30 top 20 even player in the nba at times um yeah. and uh, it's kind of good to see him on a global stage actually just talk his shit and play relatively that not relatively very well um and he might be i hate to say the term x factor because obviously unless we play a crazy good team uh we're winning the damn thing but he might matter down the stretch there and you know i i don't i don't know exactly how this works but if serbia if we play serbia in the corner finals or if, if serbia because i think it's two t- i'm telling you it has to be two teams from each group because if it's three groups anyway well, yeah two two group two people advance from the the group stage right because right. it comes down to point differential and all that kind of stuff as well okay okay so if, if we see serbia yes if, if we see serbia on the back end um or if we see another great country uh, if we see a dennis schroeder explosion game um 
Bam out of bio and Anthony Davis on defense there too. Anthony Davis, other than getting hurt, um, which yeah, that was rough. That was, obviously, that was a dark that, moment for me. We knew that was going to happen supported. at some point, but um, the uh, Anthony Davis' defense was great. Just seeing his like his prowess on the on the on the court, he just like there's just something about it. Like you know, he's seven feet tall. You know, he can move hella fast. Not as fast as KD. Seeing KD run downhill, sick, sick, love it. Seeing him and Steph like run things that they ran at Golden State with just giving each other a look. <laughs> it's the I was like, man, I kind of miss that. I hate the Warriors, but mm-hmm. those first two years in Golden State was the coolest fucking basketball I've ever seen. Like Ridiculous. they were just so sick, <laughs> and they were doing that just like like a little head nod running down the court, and then do like a little pick and pop or pick and roll, and just out of nowhere. And the rest of the team USA is like, I guess I'll just space. Yeah. Like they don't know <laughs> they don't know what's going on. They're just like let them do whatever they're gonna yeah, do. Yeah, they got awesome. their own little thing over there. Oh, did you see in game one? LeBron, I think it was the second or third quarter. It was KD, LeBron on the court. I don't remember who else was on the court because they weren't involved in this play. But LeBron, like, signaled for KD, and KD just did a random thing. He ran around the screen, ran back around the screen, grabs the ball, turns around, fade away, mid-range jumper, right right from the inbound, and LeBron threw it like a fucking seed, like put him on a rugby team. <laughs> Holy shit. It was we're, incredible. We're pumped. We're pumped just, over here. Just getting the best basketball players – on the planet for the most part like obviously Jokic, Giannis, Luka like some of these players are foreign and not on team USA but a majority of the best players in the world are on this team it's the best it, <laughs> there's like it's hard to watch basketball after this it's like watching NBA and then going to college that's what I'm gonna feel like when the NBA comes back I'm like man remember team USA and LeBron just being like the best player of all time but also currently the yeah. best player on his team at 40 years old yeah, it's, so sick. it's 10 consecutive all-star games, but the all-star games actually matter. Yes. So this is like the closest thing to the purest form of basketball that you could ever see. Maybe this is why people love the dream team so much before I, we were even alive. You know, possible. this could be I did it. some research. Uh, Charles Barkley was the best player on that team. Yeah. <laughs> and better than Jordan. He <laughs> shot 70 percent from the field. He was incredible. Yeah. Did some more research. I had to dig into it. I saw a TikTok and I was like, I mean, it was it was Jordan's team. But Chuck was out there. Chuck yeah. was doing the thing. Chuck may be like, maybe it's like KD on this team. He's going to score more points than LeBron, but LeBron's probably the best player. Makes sense. I, I like that take, actually. Seeing seeing LeBron, you know. We're going to get, we, just give me one good fast break Braun dunk, like a windmill or, or, or double clutch, something, anything. Just please. I need the one that. from it's Booker just, today. It was a fast break, two on yeah. one. It was just Booker on two, and then LeBron just comes storming through and he just th- throws it right behind his back. Just like left it there for LeBron. He dunks it. It was it was cool, but it wasn't like oh, and then LeBron raising the roof. <laughs> oh, we got LeBron is. raising the roof today against uh, South Sudan, and it just makes my heart happy to watch that forty year old man just dunk on people in the Olympics and on the biggest stage, bigger yeah. stage in the NBA Finals. Some people are saying yeah. some some people are yeah. <laughs> I well, think I'm looking at the only person that's Olympic saying that. gold medal for your country. Or some team in your country, you know? You got a point. You got a Makes point there. Think. Makes you yeah. think. And LeBron became a member of the 300-point club in the Olympics. So it's KD, nice. LeBron, and um, Melo. Nice. Those are Car- the three. Carmelo Anthony, baby. Wasn't he the leading scorer at one point? He was the GOAT. He was the GOAT <laughs> until this, uh, not this Olympics, but Tokyo, I think. He got passed up by KD in points. Mm, but yeah. they've been, like, basically on the same amount of teams. I think KD's got one more team on him now. Is what it is. So makes sense. It is. Um, love my Carmelo Anthony. Let, let's give a shout out to South Sudan, though. Uh, they're going to be a problem next Olympics. Uh, Luel Deng is dumping his own personal money into them. They are flying on his dime, staying on in hotels on his dime. Like he's hiring trainers, food, all of the things on his own dime because South Sudan is unable to pay for it or refuses to pay for it. One or the other. That's so sick because he's not even South. Sud- he's not even from South Sudan. From a different well, well, there, there, there's a civil war. There, there was a civil war recently, I think. Uh, so that's why it's South and North Sudan, I take but it. He, but he's from Nigeria. Is what oh, I'm he's not even from true. South Sudan. So hmm. him pouring into a different country's program is really cool. They haven't played basketball indoors until like pre Olympics exhibition started. Like they only played outdoors in South Sudan, <sighs> which nuts. is crazy. Wow. And 
it's basically every NBA GM's job right now to find a 6'8 versatile wing that can shoot threes and play defense. And South Sudan is just a team of those guys. And one yeah. guy that's 5'10 that's really shifty and really good, <laughs> like scored a lot on <laughs> Steph Curry today. Crazy. Looks yep. like um, Fred Van Vliet size, basically, and he's just running around scoring on Steph Curry in the Olympics. Pretty cool. But South Sudan is just made of 6'8 to 6'10 wings that play defense and shoot threes. Oh, they they, they awesome. had their moments for sure. They had their moments for sure. But seeing – seeing I forgot who it was, obviously, but – um, th- there was this guy on South Sudan. I think it was second quarter, maybe. He just drives on LeBron and just dunks around him. And I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like maybe that was their like get up moment, like mentally. And ever since yeah. then, they they played really well. But uh, it was kind of close at that point. And I was like, "Huh, that might be a might be a little uh, momentum swing." Yeah, and they almost beat the U.S. in the uh, exhibition rounds before the Olympics started. Right. And it was a one point game, two point game. Um, U.S. had to score with what ten seconds left. And LeBron James exactly. hitting the game winner. LeBron, our goat, uh, your goat, everyone's goat, had to score with like less than 10 seconds to beat South Sudan in exhibition, which was not good. We were all freaking out at that point. Bad like, what the fuck happened here? Um, they figured it out against South Sudan. They're a tough opponent. Obviously, it's a 17-point difference instead of a 26-point difference like they had uh, in game one. But they're a tough team. Like They hit threes when they needed it. They didn't hit threes like the U.S. did. The U.S. was like around 50%. I think that South Sudan was around 30, 35 but they were hitting threes in timely moments. They were getting dunks. Like they played great defense, a lot of steals, a lot of blocks. Um, fun, a fun team to watch. Like if they weren't playing the U.S., I'd be paying a lot more attention to them. But during today's game, but yeah, they were fun to watch. And shout out to Lou Aldang for stepping up and paying for everything. Like that's a huge expense as well to coach the team. It's one thing to like take the time out of your summer and like the year, two years, whatever it is for their program to coach a team and put the team together and spend the time to do that. But then he's also spending the money on top of it to make sure that these guys had the opportunity to go play in the Olympics and show what they're made of. And a lot of them might end up with like 10 day contracts, might might end up in the G league and get called up to the NBA because they played incredibly well against the best players on the planet. So shout out to South Sudan, shout out to Luau Dang. It's a sick story. They're going to make a cool movie about it one day. Yeah, Can't wait. Definitely. I'm excited. Can't wait. It's a, it's a really beautiful thing. And I'm glad that you can, you and I and other people can appreciate it for what it is. Cause you know, we have these, you know, the stories of let's say like one to five athletes go from a very small country to the Olympics. And then one of them medals or gets a bronze or whatever. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing, but this is what the Olympics are about. This is every year. There's always one to five to 10, even really cool stories like this. And I'm glad that at least something like this happened in basketball to where we can put the shine on it and appreciate it for what it is. Cause you know, we love, we love the USA. We love this crazy, amazing all-star team that they've put together. But if any other team can even compete with that, not, not just compete, but like actually flourish in some instances, like how they were beating the U S and most of that uh, exhibition game, that, that that's really cool to see. And uh, I, I love it. So any parting thoughts before we come back after another two games? So I think there's another uh, group stage game, and then we'll have a quarterfinal game next week, I would assume. So yeah. we'll be back after that. And uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, I, I love this team. I love Anthony Edwards. Um, we've been on the Anthony Edwards train for years. Some are saying years. Yes. Um, and uh, keep watching basketball. Happy, happy summer. Uh, you get to watch elite level play of basketball in July, August. Appreciate it for what it is. NFL starts in a couple days here, and let's get after it. Or tomorrow, even. I think the Hall of Fame game is tomorrow, today, if you're watching this. Yeah, my body is craving contact with the football. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was watching a receiver earlier today, the Netflix show that they did, and it's it's incredible. I, I just – I love football, but I love basketball, and we're here to talk about basketball. And That's right. Swimming and track and field and everything else that pops into my mind during the podcast about the Olympics. I love the Olympics. Yeah, the I'm Olympics are craving. amazing. It's I'm a beautiful thing, man. Yep. Still craving football. It's a problem. Um, but yeah, shout out to our sponsors, Big City Wings, Houston's Wing Joint, Apollo's Wing Joint. Go check them out. They've got 13 locations in the Houston area. So chances are, if you're in Houston, there's a Big City Wings pretty close to you. Not a big deal. Shout out to Big City Wings. Shout out to Prize Picks. Use code Apollo when you sign up. Get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Shout out to Prize Picks. It's a daily fantasy app. Go sign up today using code Apollo. Josh, thank you for joining me. U.S., uh, thank you for playing basketball and being the greatest country on this world. Uh, That's right. I need the swimmers to pick it up. I need the swimmers to start beating Australia. I'm having a little bit of panic attack every day watching the finals. Um, I need to beat Australia. That's the one thing that's a burning fire in my soul. 
I don't care about anything else. Beat, <laughs> beat Australian swimming and then U.S. beat everyone. That's I right. Don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I love Olympic basketball. It's the best. But shout out to you for listening and viewing this episode. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already on YouTube at Apollo H-O-U. We'll see you next week with a couple more games of the Olympics in USA basketball. This has been Zero Gravity, Apollo Media's NBA podcast.